Hello, I'm happy that you're connected with me today in our continuing series, In Pursuit of the Father. Recently, I was rereading the famous prayer of Jesus in John chapter 17, and I discovered a whole new aspect of God's heart for unity and how the Father longs for His children here on earth to be one as He and His Son were one. Now you can read it for yourself in John 17, especially verses 20 to 26. The words of Jesus was asking the Father that all may be one, just as He and the Father were one. This is what He says, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me, that's a key word, and I am in you so that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you've given me, I've given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and you loved me. You loved them even as you loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am to see my glory that you've given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you. And these know that you have sent me. I've made known to them your name and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. This dialogue with the Father was so significant because we realize that our Father, the one we've been pursuing now week by week, is the source of true unity within the body of Christ, within a family. So how do we walk in this same kind of unity that Jesus the Son had with His Father? I find three key principles in this passage. First of all, number one, indwelling. How many times Jesus said, Father, you're in me and I am in you. You see, if we're not inhabited by the Father, we're gonna be inhabited by something else. It could be pride, it could be offense, it could be bitterness, it could be selfishness, compromise. Whatever it is, everything that comes from the flesh, if it's still residing within us, I think it's time to expel those squatters from the house of the Lord. Now it's very interesting to see how often the New Testament talks about some of the things that are called works of the flesh and how they diminish or destroy unity. We find an example in Colossians 2, 18 to 19, because he was talking about a sensuous mind and being puffed up rather than holding fast to the head from whom the whole body, which is nourished and knit together through its joints and ligaments, grows with the growth that comes from God. And then again in Galatians chapter 5, we see the works of the flesh. In verses 19 to 21, among all those sexual immorality and, and impurity sins are the other works of the flesh, such as strife, jealousy, rivalry, dissension, division all of these factors that destroy unity. So rather than being inhabited by the works of the flesh, we're to be inhabited by the Father. The second point is righteousness. Jesus addressed the Father as righteous Father to underline that quality that God possesses and that God has given to us through Jesus. In fact, Jesus said in Matthew 13, 43, the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. And the third point is the love. How many times did Jesus repeat the phrase, the way you have loved me, let them love others. And we see many other verses in the Bible exhorting believers to walk in love. Why? Because love is the motor of unity. Love is what fuels unity and enables unity to be a reality and not just some nice idea that we pursue half-heartedly. Unity is very much on the heart of the Father, and that's why as we continue to pursue the Father, 
you and I should believe together to grow in unity and to be instruments of unity. A child has his father's DNA. I've already said that. That's why we are empowered to love and to be a source of unity. So let me pray for you today according to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. Father, I pray that we would all be able to speak the truth in love and grow up in every way into you, who are the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined together and held together by every joint which supplies, each part works properly and makes the body grow so that the body will build itself up in love. And I pray this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. On that note, I'll see you next week.